data flows are easy mode. Let me show you how I use data flows to make everything easier. Let's go. So before I start showing you what a data flow is or how you can set it up, let me show you another way that you can share data. You can share data by going to a report that you've already built. If you click on the data source, usually shows this little data set icon here. You can click on it and then hit share. So this is for a case where you have a report and someone needs exactly the data that you've used to create either a brand new report or just make modifications without ruining your report. The limitation is with this is whoever you share this with, they can only use exactly the data that you're sharing with them. They can't add any other sources. And for some, that might be a benefit. But for most people, I wouldn't recommend just sharing the data set as it's quite limiting. However, if we look at a data flow, a data flow is a lot more dynamic and is going to be able to help us do a lot more things. So to be able to set up a data flow, what we're going to do is create, for this example, our own workspace. So I've already created a workflow for us called data flows test. Now what you want to do to be able to add a data flow is go to new and we're going to click on data flow. Now there's a few options and I'll go through a couple, but I want to explain them just real quick for you. Defining new tables is like setting up a brand new data source like you would do whenever you're creating a Power BI report. Linking allows you to connect to other data flows and I'll explain why that's important later on. Importing allows you to share data flows between workspaces and attaching a common data model is only really applicable if you're using something like Dynamics 365. We're not gonna cover that in today's video. So let's start by adding a source. We're gonna go ahead, add new tables. And it's gonna ask you what you wanna to connect to. A lot of stuff that you're normally used to. For this example, we're gonna to connect to OData connecting to Microsoft's Northwind database. So I'm gonna go ahead and click OData, use a URL. Right here we have the Northwind database. Go ahead, hit next. And then you can pick whatever you need. For this example, we're only gonna do the invoices table. Now we see everything in here and we can go ahead and hit transform data. Now, if you've added a lot of data sources before, you're gonna see this is really familiar. This is just like the edit query function in Power BI. You can transform this any way you'd like. So if you need to filter things, add different things, whatever you do here is gonna be altered for whoever uses this data flow. The reason why this is important is you can load the data once and use it across multiple reports, which is great if you wanna identify a source of truth across a company. This is great for setting it up once and then never having to worry about it again. So for right now, we're not gonna do anything too crazy. We're just gonna go back to home and maybe we're gonna filter out a couple. We don't want any of the Alfreds or the Antonios. And we're just gonna hit okay. And you can see on the right, we have the source, the navigation, and the filtered rows. So for this example, I'm gonna say that's good enough. So we're gonna go ahead and say, save and close. Power BI is gonna think for a little bit, and then it'll ask you to save your data flow. For this example, we're gonna say Northwind invoices and add a little description. Go ahead and hit save. And it's gonna show you here and say, it needs to be refreshed. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit refresh now. If I wanna see the status, I'll go back to the workspace. We're gonna hit data flows test. And then you can see it's currently refreshing. The great thing about this is you can schedule a refresh. So if there's a lot of data and multiple reports are using it, instead of having to refresh it for each report, you refresh it once and all the reports reference it. So it's really efficient and helpful. So we can see that it was successfully refreshed. And if I want to schedule refreshes, I can go here, go to the schedule refresh, you can check out the refresh settings and set it up. So I can set, select the time zone. For me, I'm in Arizona, so go to Arizona. We can add a time, whatever we want in the middle of the night. We can send any failure notifications to a specific contact or me, since I'm setting it up. Hit apply. And then if you go back to the workspace, you'll see that the next refresh is set up. So this is really powerful. But what if you like this data set, but you need to add a couple of things to it? Well, no worries there. We can do that as well. If we go to new, go to data flow. And for this example, instead of adding new tables, we're going to add a linked table. So for this example, it's going to ask what we're connection, connecting to. Go ahead next. We can see here the data flow test. Go to Northwind invoices and we can see the invoice table. So we click there. It'll think for a little bit 
And there's the data that we've already pulled through the north wind. Now go ahead, hit transform data. So for the invoices here, you'll see that it has a little link icon, meaning that it's linked to the invoices data flow. Now we're gonna get data again. We're gonna go ahead, hit O data. We're gonna do the same credentials. And this time we're going to hit invoices and products. And you can see that we've pulled both in. I'm gonna go ahead and hit create and it'll pull it in. So you see that I have invoices, invoices two, and products. So you can see invoices and invoices two. Now, if you click on invoices, you can see that the source looks a little bit different. It's coming from a Power BI data flow, that one we just set up. Invoices two, however, is coming straight from our source, which is that O data source. Now this doesn't have any of the filters we already applied. The reason why I pulled both in is because if I refresh the invoices data flow that we reference, it updates it here. Versus if I add invoices twice, not only am I doing the work twice, but it's twice the work to refresh every night. So it's actually a really good idea to have some core data sets that your business is using and then link it between other data flows. So if you have one data flow that only a certain set of users have, but you have another one that might have some similarities, then you can split it up between departments or whoever your users are to make it much more efficient when you're refreshing every night. So for this example, we don't actually need invoices too. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit delete. And then we're left with the invoices from the invoices data flow and the products. Now I need to create a brand new table and I wanna merge. So I'm gonna go up here, hit merge queries, merge queries as new, bring the invoices and the products. And we're gonna go look for product ID right here and right here. And then if you're familiar with SQL, we'll see the different types of joins that we can do. So we could do inner where only they match, a full outer for both, a right outer just where it matches on the product side, and a left outer just where it matches on the left side. For this example, we just wanna do a left outer and hit okay. Now once you've done this, Power Query and data flows automatically are very, very careful when it comes to sharing data. So if you're connecting two data sources, for this example, we can pretend that products came from a database or whatever. It's gonna say, hey, we're, ca we're canceling this because we're worried that you might reveal data from one source to another. For this example, we're okay. We know that it's good and safe and whoever would be using this data flow need, would need access to all this information. So we're gonna go ahead and hit continue. Now you look at the merge and if we go all the way to the right, you see that it links to the product table and that's exactly what we need. So we're gonna go ahead and we want to check one more thing. So before I'm ready to save and close here, I wanna right click on invoices and uncheck this enable load. Same thing for products. So what that's doing is whoever's connecting to this data flow, I don't actually want them to see this invoices and products table. Now this merge table is gonna have some of the product information that I wanted as well as some of the invoice information that I wanted but I don't want them to see the individual tables. I just want them to see the combined table. So we're gonna head, go ahead, hit save and close. It'll compute. It'll ask me to name it again. I'm gonna do merge data flow and hit save. Same thing, it'll ask me to refresh. Okay, now that we have that, let's go to Power BI. So this is where it becomes really powerful. Say as a user, I don't have access to a SQL database or any specific data source. If someone sets it up for me as a data flow, I can always pull it in as a view only for Power BI. So we can go to get data, more, data flow, go to our data flows, hit connect. Usually between this step, it'll ask you to sign in again, even if you're already signed to Power BI. So then it's gonna look up your workspace, go to data flow test. For this example, we have both Northwind invoices and that merge data flow that we loaded. So if we click on the merge, we'll see the data's in and we're gonna go ahead and load it. Now that it's done, we can go here and let's see the fruit of our labors. I'm gonna do customer ID, customer name, product ID, and product name. So we go through, we can see that product name between the two tables has been merged and the great thing about this is everyone that's loading this data set 
has the same up-to-date data at the same time. So I could create this report, one of my coworkers could also pull this data flow, and the best part is I can keep adding other data sources. So if I wanted to get my own data set, go to OData, put in my URL, and add more, I definitely could. But the data flow allows it to be managed, taken care of, and allows everyone to have a single source of truth, which is super helpful. Now, if you find yourself in different environments very often and you have to switch accounts, you're gonna have issues with data flows. Just because you change your sign-in on the top right doesn't necessarily mean that it's gonna sign you out of data flows. To fix that, go to File, Options and Settings, Data Source Settings, and make sure to clear the permissions for data flow. For here, we're gonna hit Delete. So that's it for data flows. One thing to keep in mind though, data flows do have a two hour refresh limit per data source. So if you have a specific data flow that has multiple data sources, there's a two hour limit for each data flow. And for the data source itself, there's a three hour limit. So if you're refreshing a ton of data sets, be careful and keep that in mind. That's all I've got today. So if you like the video, please like and subscribe. If you have any questions, feel free to comment below and I'd be happy to answer. Have a good day.